Dancing in the rain. Today I'm not going to talk about the weather, though we talk a lot about the weather in the Netherlands. I'm going to talk about you. I'm going to talk about your families, your friends, your neighbors and colleagues. Before I get started, my name is Katharina Martin, and my passion is technology and how to apply technology to improve mental health care. I'm going to talk about a huge problem that we are facing in the world, but I'm also going to provide a solution to that. So let's start talking about us today. There are more or less 500 people sitting here, which is amazing. And unfortunately, four out of every 10 people sitting in this room has had or will have a mental health disorder in their lives, such as depression, anxiety, addiction, or dementia. Four out of ten. As a matter of fact, one of every five people sitting in this room has already experienced such a disorder in the last 12 months. Um, unfortunately, we are not alone. Every year, a third of the European population suffers from these problems. 38% of the European population. We are talking about 164 million people, only in Europe. If we take a look at the international situation, worldwide situation, these are the disabilities or diseases we are accustomed to, from diabetes to cancer to cardiovascular. It may surprise you, though, that mental disorders are number one burden of disease worldwide. Number one. So, in fact, mental illnesses are major cause of disability, economic burden, and death. Just to give you an example, only in Europe, the cost of depression in lost productivity is estimated in 77 billion euros per year. So, we are facing a mental health epidemic. Did you know about that? As a matter of fact, the World Health Organization predicts that by the year 2020, only depression will be the second leading contributor of burden of disease worldwide. Only depression. The problem is even more complex, because on the top of this, we have a huge shortage of professionals. As statistics show that we have one psychiatrist available per 100,000 people in over half of the countries of the world. There are not and will not be enough professionals to treat the ones in need. And again, on the top of that, we have a huge problem with stigma. People with mental health disorders do not dare to talk about their problems, not even to their partners, family members, of course not with the, with the colleagues at work. Most of them do not even seek professional help, so they go untreated. Stigma is such a great and discriminating problem that it can have a more profound impact than the mental health problem itself. Now, have you ever seen a semicolon tattoo? And do you know what it represents? A semicolon is used when you want to finish a sentence, but it but actually wasn't, right? So that is why people with mental health disorders or people who want to support them mark themselves with a tattoo. This is an international non-profit movement 
to pay respect, give love and hope to those suffering from mental health disorders such as depression, anxiety, addiction, self-injury, suicide. Unfortunately, there are too many stories and there are too many tattoos. I travel a lot for business, and when I'm sitting on the train or in the airplane, I engage in a conversation with someone that asks me, what do you do for a living? And then I say, oh boy, how am I going to explain this? Um, I develop online programs to help people with mental health problems. They go like, wow, is that possible? Yeah, it is possible. And we start talking, and the stories become more personal, because most of the times they just tell me their story, or the story of an uncle who has been waiting for four months to be treated after two years of deep depression, or the story of an 18-year-old daughter isolated at home who doesn't want to go to school anymore, completely in sadness. So that is why I'm standing here today. I need to tell you that this is a huge problem. This is the problem of our area, and we have to do something about it. I am crazy enough to believe that we can provide a solution to this. And the solution is to provide online help, to help people through the internet. I'm not saying that this is the only solution, but it's a major one, it's a major solution. Think about it, websites, apps, games, dedicated to help people with these problems. Before I get into this, I think it's important to mention how can we do this. It's just a matter of creating these beautiful products, and it, that is absolutely not the case. So that is why I'm so thrilled to be here today with you, because we need to team up with multidisciplinary teams to build these solutions. Mental health professionals, designers, animators, illustrators, user interface designers, ICT experts of all different sectors, virtual reality, app development, and of course, researchers, because we need to know that we actually can help these people. And hopefully, in cooperation with government and private enterprise. It sounds to me that this is a simple formula, and we can do this. Now, let me talk to you about two important, relevant facts. The first one, why, or actually what, has defined the revolution of the information technology area, the Internet, of course, and the World Wide Web. But why have they transformed the world? Not only because now we have a huge ways of accessing information anytime, anywhere, with any screen. No. But because it connects us in a way that we have never been connected before. We heard that, of course, when the electronic voice transmission device was invented, the telephone. But now we can transmit much more than only our voices. We can transmit programs, videos, music, rich media, and many other things. We have to make use of this connectivity to help. We can do much more better with that than only creating social media networks. I want you to visualize this. It is not possible to help someone with a physical problem through the screen of a tablet. I mean, I cannot go and inject someone through the screen of a mobile phone. My father, 80 years old, thinks that that would be possible sometime. That is another TED Talk, but anyway, we can do that 
with mental health problems. We actually can go through the screens of a game, of a tablet or of a mobile phone and help them. So, the solution is to make as many as possible online programs to help these people. This will be 24-7 available. They are most of the time free of charge. They are anonymous, they could be anonymous, and are at your fingertips. You don't have to wait or travel. You can do it in your own time, tempo. And what is more personal than your mobile phone? I mean, that is terrible. I know that some people think, oh my God, I mean, I cannot live without this piece of technology. But let's make a meaningful use of that piece of technology. I mean, I go to the restroom with my mobile phone. My doctor doesn't, thank God. But that is a very personal piece of technology. This is the result of many years of research and development, not only in the Netherlands, but around the world. We know we have evidence that this can help and that this way of treatment is effective for, for example, depression. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of examples. This is, for example, a website with a web-based self-help intervention which means that you can do it on your own, to deal with light of male depress depress depression. Sorry. And what is interesting is that these kind of interventions can be blended in primary care, so a general practitioner could give this to a client, to a patient, and they can make the treatment more intensive, more personal. Then you will go home and you could continue with that. So we can provide it through the internet as self-help or as blended care in primary care or in other service, care services. This is another example in the United Kingdom, Beating the Blues, also aimed for patients of depression or anxiety. Also very simple with videos, explanatory animations, exercises that you can fill in, and it's practically based on exercises that are going to look at your situation now instead of what happened in the past. Drinking less. This is one of the first web-based self-help interventions developed in the world, and for people who want to reduce or stop drinking alcohol. And based on this intervention, which is a very simple step-by-step -step guided uh, program, we have developed, together in cooperation with the World Health Organization and four international institutes in Belarus, Brazil and India, a program for these countries. 113 Online. This is such an amazing platform, which aims to make suicide a topic we all talk about, and we dare to talk about. They provide help through a crisis chat, but also through telephone 24-7 to people who want to commit suicide. But they also provide help for family members. And, last but not least, we also have to think about risk population. For example, cancer patients are at risk to develop mental health problems. So we develop this mobile application to help them with very simple exercises, some of them even based in mindfulness, to help them to get more resilience to try to prevent mental health problems. And because we all should work all the time in our mental vitality, not only to think faster, but to have more resilience, there are positive online psychological programs, like this one. This is an example based on a program we developed here in the Netherlands, scifit.nl. Pick your happiness so you can 
follow this program and adopt healthy lifestyle behavior to help you to build your resilience. Now, the communication possibilities, the ways we can connect nowadays are tremendous. We have from intelligent contact lenses to virtual reality glasses, which show 3D videos that are so realistic that we can confront people, for example, with anxiety or agoraphobia, people who are afraid to be in open spaces, with that glass to walk in an open shopping center or a crowded street without leaving the room. Or, for example, I brought one of my favorites, which is a game that is aimed for children from eight years old to 12, and they do not play with a joystick or with a mouse or with a console. They play with their brain waves. They use and they wear a neurofeedback headset, which is capable to measure their brain waves. And it helps them to light up the room, to follow their targets, to keep control of their anxiety and also to learn to avoid all the threatened situations, animals, cats, that are appearing to focus on their goal, which in professional language is called attentional bias modification. We can do this. This is developed by the Place Nice Institute, and there are many, many other examples that we could talk about. So, again, the solution I'm bringing today is to provide digital help, online help, through multidisciplinary teams. So, doctors in the room, teachers in the room, designers, ICT developers, government, do we have policymakers here? Private enterprise, join and make this happen because we are facing the problem of the area, which is mental health problems. Now, for the ones suffering from mental health problems, I want to tell them that their life is worth living to the fullest. So please look for help. And I know that is a very difficult message to grasp when you're suffering that. So I'd rather tell you, life is not about waiting the storm to pass, but to learn to dance in the rain. Thank you very much.